welcome everyone to another video. I'm in a hotel in London right now and today I want to discover the bomb sites of the Zeppelins and First World War. So come with me. So let's take a closer look at London's map. We can see the River Thames going straight through the city from west to east and that made it pretty easy for the Zeppelins to find the city in the night. London was completely dark in the First World War and they could always find the city in nights with moonlight and they could see the reflections on the river. Also you can see this um, 180 degree turn in the river around the Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf so that was always pretty easy to identify and this is the reason why the Zeppelins could always find London even in the night. So because they always approached from the east side there was strong defense coming from the east but because the German Emperor Wilhelm II was uh, like instructing the Zeppelins that they shouldn't damage certain buildings, including the Buckingham Palace and also um, St. Paul's Cathedral, um, it was easier for the Zeppelins to fly through London or fly over London um, in such a turn. So they didn't follow exactly the river because of the strong defense there. They um, flew over the city in such a turn. And we can see that the places that I wanted to visit, the places with memorials today, are on such a line. So they go straight through the inner city. So I took a bike and cycled through London to visit all these places. So the first place brings us to Farrington. To be honest, I was just walking past that building and I didn't really see that. But um, when I looked at the map and found out I just passed it, I turned around and I could suddenly read the Zeppelin building and there is a plate outside. The next one brings us to the Lincoln's Chapel. And you can see this picture here. Um, you see the bomb um, crater on the street and you can still see the marks on the house. And today there is a little round circle in the road which indicates where the bomb hit the road and you can still see all the damage to the chapel's wall, which is quite impressive. And it gives you an idea of um, what happened here. So you can still see the damage, especially um, up to like one meter high, but you can still see it there at the at the ceiling, but most of the damage is in the lower area. You can also work out the direction because you see that behind this pillar there is no damage, but on the other side there is damage. And it's quite impressive to see, to realize that this damage comes from a Zeppelin. So the next station is the Dolphin Tavern, which is a small pub which was completely destroyed by a Zeppelin. Today it's a pretty popular place to visit because when the building was destroyed there was a clock inside and the clock stopped at um, the time you can see here and the clock is still in the new pub, so you can visit it today. Next place is Queen Square and it's a small nice park and also with this one I couldn't find it first, I walked past it a couple of times but suddenly when I turned around I could see this round pitch in the park with a small plate and also here, um, here was uh, one Zeppelin bomb going down. The next place is the Bedford Hotel which is right next to the park. And um, also here is a plate outside, but this building was not struck by a Zeppelin bomb, but that was a Gotha bomb. So the long range Gotha bombers of the Germans that su uh, superseded the Zeppelins. Um, our next place to visit is a small park in the south, so south of the river. And also here is a memorial plate because one bomb hit here. A little bit further south on a graveyard there is still the first memorial of the victims of Zeppelins. And the next place I visited um, was the Imperial War Museum because here is a large collection of all kinds of Zeppelin things. And I mainly came here to see the spy basket. This spy basket was dropped by a Zeppelin in 1916 and 
it's on display here and I could find it um, above the first world war trenches at the ceiling and it's quite impressive to see it it's quite big it's much bigger than I thought it would be from the pictures a person can lie inside and you can see this wooden plate on the ground so the person could lay inside there but you can also see a table at the top so the person could sit at a desk with light with a map and uh, with compass and um, could give directions to the zeppelin it's pretty huge so um, I was thinking that people could even stand inside and um, this spy basket was dropped because the zeppelin was attacked by planes and it wanted to get away and um, such a spy basket system had a weight of around 1500 kilogram so to get higher the zeppelin dropped this one furthermore you can see a lot of interesting um, parts that came out of the zeppelin or that people recovered from um, crashed zeppelins so such as cables or for example this london map which is also very interesting to see with which london map the germans were flying to london and so there's a great collection of stuff in the museum and it's really worth seeing it also you can see the bullets here that brought the zeppelins down these bullets ignite a fire on board and then ignite the hydrogen and this is basically what what was bringing these zeppelin raids to an end because um, they were suddenly vulnerable yeah so i hope you like this little insight into the zeppelin traces of london and if you like this video please subscribe and consider to become a b-sport club member so see you at the next one